61% of the world's computers will face a real crisis in less than a year, affecting not just ordinary individuals, but also companies, schools, and even hospitals. The biggest issue is that most people are unaware of the problem, and even those who are aware haven't found an easy solution yet. So what could cause half of the world's devices to encounter a problem simultaneously? More importantly, what can we do now? 400 million computers worldwide will face a major issue in less than a year. This is because Microsoft has decided to stop supporting Windows 10 in October 2025. To put this into perspective, this represents 61% of computer users globally. It's not just a scarcity issue, it's a problem for the majority of users. Some might wonder why this is an issue when Windows 11 is available. Unfortunately, many devices cannot run Windows 11. According to Microsoft, the hardware requirements for Windows 11 are stricter than ever. This situation is similar to when Microsoft introduced Windows Vista 17 years ago, but with a critical difference. Back then, users could downgrade to Windows XP if needed. Now, the problem is deeply tied to the hardware. Even if your current device works perfectly with Windows 10, it might not support Windows 11. Microsoft has provided a temporary solution. Users can pay $30 annually for extended support for Windows 10. However, this is only a short-term fix and doesn't address the core issue. The primary challenge lies in the new hardware requirements for Windows 11. For instance, Windows 11 mandates TPM 2.0, a small chip in the motherboard that stores sensitive data like passwords. While this enhances security, most devices older than four or five years either lack this chip or have an outdated version. In a blog post from December 1, 2024, Microsoft confirmed that TPM 2.0 is a non-negotiable requirement for Windows 11 as part of their zero trust security strategy. They argue that this approach significantly reduces vulnerabilities to hacking. However, other requirements like modern processors, at least 4 GB of RAM, and a Direct 12 compatible graphics card further complicate matters. Devices made before 2017 are unlikely to meet these specifications. Reports from November 2024 show that the percentage of Windows 10 users increased from 61% to 62%, while Windows 11 adoption dropped slightly. Even in the US, Windows 10 usage rose, highlighting that users are hesitant to upgrade. The reasons for this include performance issues with Windows 11, such as slower file explorer speeds, lagging basic programs, and a less intuitive interface. Many users prefer the practicality of Windows 10's design and miss features like live tiles and taskbar customization. Microsoft's decision to charge for extended support has prompted many users to stick with Windows 10. For $30 a year, they can receive security updates until 2028. For those unwilling to pay, there are alternatives like upgrading to a new device, albeit at a high cost, or continuing with Windows 10 without support. Though this requires extra precautions such as regular backups and robust antivirus software, this situation impacts not just individual users, but also businesses and the tech market as a whole. Companies with hundreds or thousands of devices face significant costs to replace or maintain them. Additionally, PC manufacturers have been left with surplus inventory as users delay purchases. This could lead to price drops in the future, though economic instability may affect this. Looking ahead, the release of Windows 12 in 2025 will bring new challenges. Microsoft will need to ensure that Windows 12 works on devices compatible with Windows 11 to avoid repeating the current situation. Users hesitant to upgrade may wait for Windows 12 leading to three competing operating systems in the market. This raises an important question. Have we reached a point where we must replace our devices every few years to use new software, even if our current devices still perform well? In today's economic climate, this doesn't seem feasible for many users. To better understand the scale of this issue, it's worth examining the broader implications. For individuals, this represents not just a financial burden, but also a potential learning curve as they adapt to new systems. For educational institutions and small businesses, the cost could be prohibitive. Schools relying on older devices for students may find themselves unable to upgrade without significant budget increases, impacting the quality of digital education. Similarly, small businesses with tight margins 
may be forced to choose between operational efficiency and financial viability. For larger enterprises, the stakes are even higher. Corporations operating thousands of devices must weigh the costs of upgrading against potential risks of running unsupported systems. Security vulnerabilities on outdated systems could lead to data breaches, financial losses, or reputational damage. This could push enterprises to negotiate extended support deals with Microsoft, further complicating their financial planning. On a societal level, this issue underscores the growing digital divide. In economically disadvantaged regions, where access to newer devices is already limited, the inability to upgrade could leave millions of users further behind in the digital economy. This raises ethical questions about the responsibility of tech companies to balance innovation with inclusivity. From a consumer perspective, the hesitation to adopt Windows 11 also highlights a disconnect between user needs and corporate strategies. Many users prioritize stability, ease of use, and compatibility with existing workflows over flashy new features. Microsoft's focus on security and advanced capabilities is commendable, but the execution appears to have alienated a significant portion of their user base. Meanwhile, the anticipated release of Windows 12 adds another layer of complexity. If Microsoft cannot address the issues plaguing Windows 11, they risk alienating even more users. A smoother, more inclusive transition plan will be essential to regain trust and encourage adoption. Take your time to evaluate your options, whether it's upgrading now, waiting for Windows 12, or sticking with Windows 10 for as long as possible. The key is to understand what works best for your circumstances. Technology should serve people, not the other way around. Let's hope Microsoft and the broader tech industry find a better balance between innovation and user needs.